Greetings to your kids. Bishop Better here. I'm still your bishop. Great to be with you. I'm going to read you another book. This one is Barely Awake and Almost Asleep by Jenny Lyman. All right, let's get going here. Way up in the pine country, where the big river flows, there's a sweet fishing spot where a bear family goes. It's a good time to read a book about bears, huh? And all summer long, those big bears go about, stuffing their faces with berries and trout. But when it turns cold, old Grandpappy Bear rises up on his feet and he roars through the air. Hoppo, family, it's time to forget this fiesta. Let's tromp to our dens for a good long siesta. They're gonna hibernate. So the bear family lumbers up to their lyre. They brush all their teeth and they comb all their hair. They put on their sleep clothes with flaps in the backs and snuggle deep into their cozy sleep sacks. But Bear's just not ready. He wants some more lunch. He craves fish and pine nuts and tumbers that crunch. So amid all the dozing and sleeping and snoring, Bear sneaks to the river for further exploring. Uh-oh, I'm nowhere near sleepy. Bear firmly protests, so he fishes and gathers and happily tastes tests. But Bear has forgotten his snoozy beeper, the internal clock that will make him a sleeper. Thus, precisely at sunset, as Bear eats a trout, his snoozity buzz beeps and Bear plumps, zonks out. There he is. With a great big kip flop, he falls right in that stream, and nothing can wake him. He's starting to dream. Poor Bear is quite stuck, and his feast at an end. But lucky for him, he has Moose for a friend. Moose hears the kerploop and groans, Oh, thernation, Bear's stuck in the river for his hibernation. I must get him home to his family lair. A river's no place for a big snoring bear. I've got to just think about this. Hey, I know. I'll push Bear back home in my big wheelbarrow. Get it? <laughs> well, it takes a mighty effort. Moose lifts and lugs and drags. And when the bear is all loaded, my, how that cart sags. They make it down river about 50 yards. Then the wheelbarrow bursts its slivers and sh shards. Oh, fui, says Moose. My cart is now junk. He sits there and stews. Then along comes a skunk. See, skunk is not pleased by the loud interruption. He takes aim at Moose and prepares for eruption. The blast is so stinky, Moose runs for the trees and catches his antlers on hives of mad bees. Now dripping with honey, Moose shoves and he heaves that great lug of bear through the grass and the leaves. The leaves are still stinking. Moose tries to be brave. But he's got to keep moving. Bear still needs his cave. So with great perseverance, up hills and round bends, Moose keeps pushing Bear until the trail ends. And looking around him, Moose sees, Hooray! Bear's family den is just three feet away. Bear wakes with a start. Well, Moose, say, you're tardy. About time you showed up to my long slumber party. You'll never believe all the dreams I've had. Rivers and beehives and smells that were bad. Oh, hum, Moose. No offense, but you look sort of funny. Why did you dress up in fall leaves and sweet honey? The moose just rolled his eyes and bear yawned a great yawn. Let's go nap, Moose replies as they're crossing the lawn. The friends enter the cave and collapse in a heap, barely awake and almost asleep. The end. That's a good story, isn't it? See, kids, what friends can do. So be good to your friends. Help each other. Help each other. Not to make fun of them when they're struggling, but to help, right? We all need help, and we all need friends. God bless you. Bye now.